A new product released today from Garmin, who now own the Tax brand, the Tax Neo Motion Plates, or what I'd more accurately call the Tax Neo Motion Rails. A small accessory, as you saw in the intro, which adds a bit of forward to back motion to Tax Neo Smart Trainers. Now the compatible trainers, the Neo, original, Neo 2, Neo 2 SE, and Neo 2T. The Tax Trainers already have a little bit of side to side wiggle, so this small compact accessory just adds another dimension back and forward to the trainers. Insulation only takes a few seconds. You just need to upend your Neo, remove the four existing feet, and insert the rails, which have little magnets to keep them in place. And job done. It's as easy as that. This motion plate accessory adds around 25 millimeters of height to your Tax Neo trainer, and the new riser block, as supplied, also takes that into account. It's also a little squeaky with the GP5000 28mm tyres I have. A closer look at the new versus old, old there on the left, new there on the right. The old one was very concave and just sat your tyre in one spot. The new one there on the right allows the tyre to roll back and forward and is a little taller. My initial impressions of how the ride feel went was it was a little easier to move back and forward than it was on the other plates that I'd used, the MP1 and also the Rocker Plate RPV2, which also had the forward and backwards motion. That's likely because with those other forward and back motion devices, you had a massive plank of wood that was also moving with you, adding to the overall weight. So it felt a little twitchier, a little freer to move back and forward. Um, was it a good thing? Was it a bad thing? Not necessarily. It was uh, just a little different to the other forward and back plates that I've used. If you're wondering exactly how much the unit moves, give or take, it's about 40 to 45 millimeters back to front for full range of movement, depending on how hard you're pressing forward and back. When I was just riding along, my pedal style meant the unit moved around 8 to 10 millimeters. Garmin did mention to me that the motion plates were not built for sprinting, which of course means I'm going to do a sprint. Here's how that turned out. Yeah, not all that pretty. For me, my sprinting style indoors requires something that's firmly planted to the ground. This wasn't too bad, but it really wasn't built for sprinting. So I'll have to agree with Garmin on that one. Okay, saddling up for Tour of Watopia Stage 4, just a short ride, to show you how the motion plates handle themselves with what I would call a normal ride on Zwift, or a race that's not really a race. Some out of the saddle efforts coming up as we fly down the uh, hanging bridge here on the jungle circuit reverse and up out of the saddle you'll see how the motion plates respond. Aside from the front wheel squeaking, no issues there with the learned technique I guess you'd call it that I have for riding out of the saddle indoors. Now onto the final sprint where I was completely caught out of position and got completely hosed. Not quite a peak sprint after this uh, quite solid effort, I'd call it, for this not a race race. Front riders already started their sprint up. I'm starting my sprint way too late. But there's how everything operates under race conditions when you're out of position. It was about five seconds too late on that one, but there we go. There's the motion plates actually holding up for what I would call a medium sprint. So you can still sprint on them. You just need to refine your technique. And now onto the price. And this is where things come a little unstuck for this pretty neat little accessory. But first, let's have a look at the alternatives out there for indoor forward and back and side to side motion. There's the Saris MP1 motion plate. So full motion, you get side to side, back and front. Multi-trainer compatible, it's 
pretty big unit coming in at $1,200 US. There was also the KOM Rocker Plate RPV2, which came in at $799 US, but that's no longer in existence. That has been replaced by a $350 add-on kit for the RPV1, which itself costs $450. And there's also the Inside Ride Eflex Motion System. However, that's for Wahoo trainers only. That comes in at $450. Those alternate indoor cycling moving solutions are large, heavy, expensive, and expensive to ship. The Neo Motion Plates, on the other hand, well, they're small, they're compact, but they are very expensive. Coming in at $299 US for both rails and the front riser block. Personally, I do not see the value in that whatsoever. At $99 US, they'd have an absolute winner for any owner of a Neo Smart Trainer from back in 2015 to today. At $299, I think they've just given everybody a nice little blueprint to make their own alternative rocker solution for their Neo trainers. And if there's one community who loves a DIY project, it's the Rocker Plate crew online. So there we are, my take on the Tax Neo motion plates or motion rails. They're a bit of fun, but they're expensive fun if you're adding them to your Tax Neo smart trainer. As always, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe to support this channel, and to take that support a little further, there's a membership button too. Thanks for watching.